What's going on my friends, it's Bob, I'm back again with another video. It was about 10 years ago, I get this letter in the mail, and I open it up, and it's my mortgage company. And it wasn't a, a holiday card wishing me well. Oh no, it was a thing that says, hey, we miscalculated your property tax. As a result, we need you to pay $300 more per month on your mortgage payment. Whoa, what? That was like a heart attack waiting in disguise. And I thought, well, wait a minute, why is this happening? And then the year after that, it was like $50 more per month. Oh, and then the year after that, all of a sudden I get a refund check of $100. What's going on here? The title of this video is why you should never escrow in your mortgage account. And I wanna explain exactly why. I'll give you some pros, but I'm also gonna give you the cons behind why escrowing is just kind of a waste of time and how you can get out of it as soon as next month. Here we go. We just recently refinanced and after totally killing way too many trees, look at all this paperwork, oh my God. Did you hear that? There was a little box on here that said, do you want to escrow or not? I chose not because I remembered that day that I got that letter and $300 a month is a lot of money. And especially back then I didn't make a lot of money. So I was like, whoa, this is, what are we gonna do? So the reason this happens, a lot of times your property tax, more so than your property insurance, goes up and it goes down based on the market. So as your home values rise, typically your taxes will come along with that and they'll go up as well. Mortgage companies apply a, a basic model to understand how much they should be charging you in your escrow account as part of your monthly mortgage payment to hopefully pay that off in full. Well, sometimes they miscalculate it and boom, guess what? You get screwed and you have to pay more money like I did. So I said, I gotta stop this. So I, I said no, and it's been a joy ride ever since. I mean, we've been living our best life thanks to not having to escrow our uh, taxes and insurance. But let's talk through some pros first. I wanna talk about the good stuff and then we'll get into the, the stuff that you need to know, the cons that make this a, a terrible mistake. So the pros are, let's say you're just starting off, you're a new home buyer and you, you're maybe new to budgeting. This is a great way to have taxes and the insurance mixed into your mortgage payment and you don't have to worry about anything. At the end of the year, the mortgage company will automatically send away the payment to the property tax, to the insurance company, and you don't have to worry about anything. It makes it very easy from a budgeting perspective and you're all set. And that's about the only pro I can think of. Let's go on to the cons. Okay, so here are the cons. Here's the deal. I don't like the fact that I got that $300 bill and I know I keep harping on that, but then I realize that if we can be in control of our money and basically set aside money for the property tax and insurance, we can make up some serious bank. I mean, compared to what the mortgage company is probably doing. So hear me out on this for a second. If we can be controlling our money, which is what this channel is all about, taking control of our finance so we can be the masters of our own life. If you know that your taxes are $5,000 a year, you divide that up by 12 months or even every week that you get paid and you simply put that money automatically away in a savings account. And then over the period of the year, let's say you find yourself a very good high yield savings account. I would recommend even the uh, Citibank as well as American Express, they tend to offer some of the highest interest rates. So all that money that you have sitting waiting for the property tax bill or the property insurance bill to come due gets to gain a little bit of interest. In my opinion, even if it's a low interest rate of only 0.5%, that's better than 0% interest by sending it to the mortgage company. Because I don't know, but I would bet that those companies are smart enough to take your escrow account and they have it invested somewhere in some type of either CD or savings account and they're earning interest on it and not telling you about it. I don't know, I have a sneaking suspicion about that. So by controlling your own money and not escrowing anymore, you can then take that into your savings account, rack up a little bit of interest, and then you're rocking and rolling. And then simply at the end of the year, you take the money out of the savings account, boom, and you pay off. And then you don't have to worry about the adjustments in this various miscalculated mortgage. I thought a lot of times when it comes down to how I was trending my property tax, while it does go up and sometimes it goes down through the years, the, the mortgage company just totally overcalculates everything. So in paying attention to your property appraiser's website and seeing what your property tax value is, you can have a better control of if it's going up or down. Then you just either save more money or have extra money in your savings account, which is a little bit better than overpaying a mortgage or underpaying a mortgage. One more con to this is that if you're a nerd like I am, I like to calculate everything. I like to see things. I like to see progress. Right now, we're on a path to pay off our mortgage in the next five years. By the way, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be sharing with you some updates on our mortgage payoff journey and how we're able to pay off a 30-year mortgage in only five years. So be sure to subscribe to check that out. But I, I sit here and I wonder, you know, 
I like the nerdy thing of being able to look at my Excel uh, spreadsheet. But to me, it's always been a challenge, even 10 years ago in our other house, trying to calculate the principal and interest payment on the amortization schedule with all the escrow stuff put in. So you're paying all this extra money and you're trying to figure out how do I accelerate my, my debt payoff? How do I accelerate my mortgage payment? It's hard because you have to consider, okay, well, it's telling me to put $200 in extra per month on top of the base rate. So if your base rate is only $1,000 per month, which is principal and interest, you put another hundred on, it actually could be that you're actually paying $1,400 and not just $1,100. Why? Because you're escrowing your property tax and insurance. So it makes the calculation to me very wonky, very confusing. And ever since I stopped escrowing, it is easier to look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna apply an extra $200 a month, $500 a month, whatever I can afford. And I can actually see the figures update a little bit easier and a little bit more realistic. And it just makes it easier from the calculation perspective. So with the cons and the pro that we talked about, how do you get out of this mess? You know, you might be sitting here, nah, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna escrow anymore. How do I get out of this? Well, there's, there's a couple of ways. So first of all, I found the best way to get out of the escrow account for a lot of people is to refinance. And if you refinance, typically not with a big bank. Uh, recently, I just refinanced with Churchill Mortgage. They give you the option when they kill a bunch of trees with all the paperwork you gotta sign to opt out of escrowing your account. So I would recommend doing it that way. It also looks at how much equity you have in your house. So typically if you're a new home buyer and you don't put down at least 20%, the mortgage company will typically decline your request and they'll say, no, 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 you have to escrow. There's no other option. And that's because you have less than a 20% down payment. The, the reason they do that is a lot of times new home buyers, they get in here, they maybe not budget correctly, and they've had issues where if they allow you to pay your own property tax, if you don't, the, the county or the state can actually put a lien on your house. And then if you foreclose on the house, they get paid first before the mortgager. And of course, the mortgager wants their money. They don't want to give it to the state and local government. So they're going to say, no, 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 get it, get it together, get it with us and we'll sort it all out. And that's just something that you gotta keep in mind. If you wanna get out of it right away from your very first home purchase, get a way to get 20% down or more so that you can have a little bit more power to say, I don't wanna escrow. But if you've been in your house for a little while, you have some loan to value, you have some equity built up and your mortgage has been paid down a little bit, it might be the time to call and say, hey, current bank, what do you think if I stop escrowing? They may laugh in your face and in which case you say, okay, fine and then look into if refinancing may be a better option based on interest rates and the costs associated with refinancing. And then at that point, you'll have a little bit more power during the refinance to say, hey, I will only refinance if you let me not escrow my property tax and insurance. I wanna pay it on my own. And then that way you can take all that money and put it toward the savings account that we talked about earlier. Continue to live your sweet life because you're worth it. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next time.